Welcome everyone to my new series of spoiler-free film reviews. How this will work is that I review a film based on a different theme which will be based on this book right here. Everyone's a critic, the 52-week movie challenge. While some themes are about films I have seen, the bulk of the challenges will mostly be about films that I've never watched. So why watch films I've never seen? Well, I've been keeping a list of films I want to watch, and I've never had the time to check them all out. In fact, it's grown so long that it's making Rapunzel's hair look like a pixie cut, but I digress. Will this video single-handedly complete my list? No. Like, no way. Not, not even close. But it'll take at least a bite out of it. Nonetheless, I still hope you enjoy my first episode where I talk about my favorite film of all time. So without further ado, on with the video. As far as memorable movie villains go, Belloc is definitely one of the greats. For all the times he gains one step ahead of Indy, I dare say, he's still pretty fly. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh, your opinion, man. Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, or as it's technically called, Raiders of the Lost Ark, is about the titular archaeologist played by Harrison Ford who goes on a global quest to retrieve the Ark of the Covenant. His rival archaeologist, Belloc, played by Paul Freeman, also pursues the Ark alongside the Nazi regime. With the help of Indy's former lover Marion, played by Karen Allen, she and Indy must get to the Ark before Belloc and the Nazis can use its powers for their means to an end. And just to cut to the chase, Raiders is my favorite film of all time. It is a masterpiece. I don't even have to think about the question to answer it. It's the first film I think of whenever I think of movies I love. My history with this film is that I first saw this film on DVD around the time when Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was coming out. And yeah, the fourth one wasn't that good, but that's besides the point. Aw, oh, damn it! I've yet to see an action movie better than Raiders since. I love it so much that on a school night, I actually dragged my best friend to an anniversary screening at my local theater at the time. He never saw it, and of course, he loved it. This is a film that I've seen constant times, and not only do I not get tired of it from watching, but I also grow to appreciate its filmmaking with every single viewing. Raiders represents everything that makes the action genre so outstanding and how it could still be that good to its day. While there's no shortage of terrific superhero films like The Dark Knight and Black Panther, pure action films of masterful craft like Mad Max Fury Road and Mission Impossible Fallout feel like diamonds in the rough nowadays. Raiders still feels just as exhilarating today as it did back in its debut in the summer of 81. Harrison Ford as Indy is phenomenal. The character is one of the most badass action heroes of all time. By the same token, Indy's personality makes him feel so real and the action all the more tense. Yeah, Indy's strong and gritty, but he's also dry, intelligent, cocky, and shown to be pretty flawed at times. I learned to hate you in the last 10 years. I never meant to hurt you. I was a child. I was in love. Karen Allen is also awesome as Marion Ravenwood. Even though she has her fair share of times getting captured, she's still smart, tough, witty, adventurous, and can carry her own weight when she has to throw down. That's so much more than I can say about Willie from Temple of Doom, who just... Moving on, all the characterization is fully realized with the rivalry between Indy and Belloc. Paul Freeman is criminally underappreciated as Belloc. For such an iconic film, I don't hear the character talked about a lot in terms of great action movie villains. Through watching Belloc tempt Indy with the power of the arc while beating him by just one step ahead makes their rivalry feel so engaging. There's a feeling that at any point, Indy could just snap and become just as obsessive as Belloc is. Also, what else is there to say about John Williams' iconic score that everyone else hasn't? Not a lot, but it honestly cranks the intensity all the way to 11. Music for sequences like the desert chase, the plane fight, and the brawl in town flow through the scenes perfectly and boil up to an exciting climax. At the same time, the score also shows its tender side, particularly Marion's theme, the perfect camaraderie of romance and adventure. If the desert chase track reminds me of the action of Raiders, 
then it's Marion's theme that makes me think of the soul of freighters. Speaking of the desert chase, that brings me to the action sequences. As I've said before, because Indy comes off as a regular guy, the action sequences perfectly convey the physical stakes involved. The action sequences do have a recurring setup. Stuck in a physical scenario, Indy gets pinned in a corner, and he lives by the skin of his teeth. But the film's pacing is just perfect. In fact, each sequence feels so unique from each other because while the formula remains intact, the situations always change up with each one. This saves the plot from becoming so monotonous in one note. I am, of course, talking about the plane sequence. For all the reasons I've mentioned on why the action works, I can't tell you how hooked I was to the screen I was during this plane sequence, where Indy fights a guy twice his size. I honestly wish more filmmakers would make more action movies where the hero doesn't always have the upper hand in a fight. Everything I've mentioned wouldn't be possible without my all-time favorite director Steven Spielberg behind it all. It's quite clear that he takes a lot of inspiration from the film serials of the Golden Age, but his direction adds so much modern flair and expertise that makes Raiders feel so timeless. Take this scene for instance where Marion is introduced. It begins with Marion having a drinking contest with a patron. Notice how the camera not only shoots this sequence in one continuous take, but how it also mimics the gaze of one of the other patrons. Through this, Marion is introduced as a tough character, but a totally ordinary one too. It's so easy to take the one take for granted. Yeah, it's cool to see how far a shot can go, but what makes it truly special is what's happening within the damn shot. With Goodfellas, Michael Bauhaus's immersive cinematography makes the location feel more immersive, lived in, and full of personality. In another film like Children of Men, Emmanuel Lubezki's devastating camera work creates a false sense of security a location that's once a safe and caring sanctuary turns into a claustrophobic and harrowing death trap. In the case of Raiders, this characterization just wouldn't translate well in a traditional shot-reverse-shot shot manner. This one camera trick alone tells me everything I need to know about Marion as a character. It just goes to show that there too is an art in making action films. This quote-unquote <laughs> doesn't just have to be reserved for art house films. In fact, cinematic excellence comes from the biggest accomplishments a filmmaker can achieve in both the genre and the medium. Overall, Raiders is definitely the reason why I love movies. It's far and away my personal favorite from Spielberg's catalog, and from the 12 years of watching it, it never ceases to amaze me, and I'm sure it'll continue to do so going forward in my life. On a scale of 1 to 10, Raiders of the Lost Ark is indeed a classic. So what's your take on Raiders of the Lost Ark? If you've seen it, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you still haven't seen it and I piqued your interest, then I envy you. You get to watch this for the very first time, something that I will never, ever, ever get to do for as long as I live. Anyway. Hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you'll know when I post my future videos. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at FilmGeekDave. That's all for today, and I'll see you next time when I review a movie sequel.